All right, let's jump into it. So we're going to talk about online lead generation today. The goal of this class is to kind of, if we're talking a scale of one to 10, and like 10 is I'm an absolute expert when it comes to online lead generation, I'm going to try to teach in the range of a one to a five with a couple seven or eight nuggets. Does that seem fair? Okay, thanks. I'm going to ask you lots of questions and you're going to have to respond or I'll just wait. So we're going to talk about the difference between the days of the internet and the ways of the internet. I know it sounds amazing. Um, so really quick, let's just jump into the why. Days of the internet, we are 50 years into having the internet. Isn't that amazing? Over 50 years. How many of you are, just kidding, <laughs> 50 years old, just kidding. Uh, so we have 5 billion internet users. And of those 5 billion internet users, 4.7 billion use social media. So today, guess what we're gonna talk a lot about? Social media. If you're on the internet, you're on social media. That's kind of the summary of that, right? Um, here's some of the top social media platforms. First is Facebook, uh, followed closely by YouTube. These are the top two. Instagram's still in here. Who knows where TikTok is? I think it was like 10. Um, yeah, pretty fascinating. A uh, couple more stats, over 50% of the sales. Oh, uh, I put this in the wrong order. That's hilarious. So 90% of all home buyers search online and then 50% of those found their home online that they bought of the sales that they, they purchased. That makes sense. 89% use mobile device devices to search online. 60 to 90% of sales are done through an agent which has been rising. So it started at 60 back in 2001 and it's been rising all the way up to 90 since 2001. Isn't that crazy? So the summary of this slide is online is where people are looking for homes, but they're still using agents to close on homes. So it's awesome. Yeah. Can I comment on that? Absolutely. When I got licensed in 2002 or three, whenever that was, yeah. I remember someone saying to me, oh, wow, you're going into kind of a dying profession because with the internet, we're not going to need realtors. Yeah. But my observation over 20 years of real estate practice is that buyers need more and more and more handholding. Yeah. Yep. Over the last 20 years. Yeah, we are needy people. Raise your hand if you're needy. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, I love that. Yes, go. If, if only 50% found it online, where did the other 50%? Yeah, it's something like that. 20 with a realtor, seven with a sign. One with the neighbor, they bought their neighbor's house. You know, it's, it's stuff like that. So this number, I think this number was from 2019. So this number probably has gone up. I think I got these, actually maybe it was 2020 that these stats came out from NAR. It was 51, okay, yeah, so it's 51 now. So you checked me, is that what you're saying? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just sitting in the class checking all these stats I post. Just kidding. Okay, so tell me your ahas from this. That's, I mean, like, that's good, Peter. We've already gotten two, but what ahas do you have from this? Like, what does this mean? We're still needed. We need to be online and we're still needed, but we're needed online, right? Like, people are not going to find you unless you're online, right? That's the same pair? Five billion people online out of how many are in the world? Like seven, eight? Anybody know? Somebody look it up and then yell it out when you figure it out. So my focus today is to talk about these four groups, but we're going to have a lot of aha moments and we're going to have a Q&A at the end. So if you have anything else you want to talk about and check, kind of get feedback on, I'm happy to go through that. But these are kind of the four things I'm going to dive more into. Does that seem fair? I mean, you can't say no, because that's what I'm going to do anyway, so. Okay, so let's talk about social media. There are several rules of social media. Some of these might seem like basic for you, but I'm still going to talk about them because they're still super important. What's the 80-20 rule? 80% personal and 20% business. That means you're posting 80% of what you post is personal, 20% is business. When does that rule not apply? On a business page right? Who has a business page in here? Becca, I'm going to tell, I'm going to ask Becca. 
because Becca has really high level business pages, right? Tell us about your business pages. What do you do on those? Wait, really quick, raise your hand if you have over $10,000 in followers on your business. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so like 22,000, that's amazing. Keep going, tell us more. Um, so we post every single day um, content and then we also do videos. So he does content, I do the video. Uh -huh. um, but I do a video on TikTok and then I post it. On your Facebook? On my Facebook. Yeah, okay. Awesome, how many of you, so how many had a business page again? How many of you have more than 400 followers on your business page? No, we don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Why do you not have more followers? She had a video that went viral, so she's like the exception. It was and... a post. The video was on my TikTok. Oh, that's true. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. It was a post that went viral, which was awesome. And that she got a ton of followers from that. But people don't follow business pages the same way they used to on Facebook. <laughs> If you're talking about Instagram or TikTok, like that's a different conversation that we can have because people follow those pages specifically for that. But I think I think business pages on Facebook in terms of following and not just like looking up to see if they're a good company and their latest reviews or like if they're still in business, it's kind of like an overrated, I mean, not overrated, but kind of a dying breed. But you should still have a business page because what can you do if you have a business page? Run ads. Right, that's it. pretty much the only reason why we have a business page is to run ads from it. Sometimes have events on it, but that's the big thing, right? Okay, so with videos and images, this is, I'm, I kind of threw in on a couple of these slides, just random points I want to remember to mention, but the 0.5 zoom, this is something that Kayton brought up. Is Kayton in here? No. So Kayton is the Red Sign Marketing Director. I'm looking at you, okay, sure, yeah, fine. Uh, she's awesome, but this is something that she taught in one of her classes that I loved. When you're doing videos on reels or whatever you're doing, zoom out to 0.5 zoom on your phone because your default is one. Especially when you're doing like, I'm showing a home or I'm trying to do like a wider picture, you, the ability to zoom out and still have a really clean looking picture and a really clean looking video that kind of encapsulates the entire room itself is, is huge. I think this is super nice. But let's talk about the difference between stories, posts, and reels. I'll write for this. So tell me, what is the difference between a story and a reel? Who knows? So right, I'm going to say that again with the mic. So a story yeah, disappears after 24 hours, and a reel is something that stays in your profile long term, but it's different than a feed post. It's like a... I don't know, short form video that you can keep on your profile long-term to get exposure. So a reel also goes to your profile as well, right? So it's forever and it becomes a post, but also it kind of goes into the real sphere, whatever you want to call that. What else? What are the other differences? You can comment on reels. Can you comment on stories? Yep. Good. You can DM a story on a post. You can comment as well. Oh, geez. It's better to post memes on your story than on your feed or a reel. I think reels go to like people who are outside your audience uh -huh. versus stories are. Uh, yep. Stories are like friends and family, right? Or I'll just say friends because that enveloped everybody. And then real is, it's kind of more like a public post, right? Um, and your posts are also friends and family. We'll just say friends and family. Anyway, um, when it comes to posting these different things, uh, let's see here. Let's play a game called, what should be the minimum? <laughs> So what do you think is the minimum amount of posts you should do in a week? We'll say a week. Stories daily, good. I, I like to have the rule of thumb that if it's a story, then I always have a story up. Right, does that seem fair? That I, I always have a story up. I never, there's never nothing on my story. 
So sometimes I'll have six things on it. Sometimes I'll just have one, but just the rule of thumb that I never have nothing. Yes, go. Yeah, great question. So, so the difference between a story and a, a feed, so when you're up here, this is gonna be different on the computer than it's gonna be on your phone, right? right? Oh, what just happened? Okay, so this is your feed, right? Everybody, and there's a lingerie thing, that's great. Everybody's got a feed, right? <laughs> that's my wife, secret model. So this is story though. And on your phone, stories are nice because you can just click next if you get bored. So that's me, that's my story showing my landscaping on my house. Right? There's our playhouse. There's Dan's story. Dan in a swimming pool. Right? So stories are just a way to like click through. You're swiping with your finger to see what's going on with your friends and family quickly. Super, super quickly. Does that make sense? Most people who are active on social media are looking at stories rather than their actual feed. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Go. Yeah, and one thing real quick to answer to this question. Says things like an open house. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll put time sensitive on here. Like once upon a time, Jason had a dog that, oh, where'd he go? He left already. Gosh dang it. He's gone. Uh, Jason had a dog that his, his friend, Anyway, this dog was going to the pound and he, we, were, we had like a 20 hour period to find a help. So we texted all the people he knew. And because we all put him on our stories, just took a picture of this cute little puppy, put on our stories, hey, free puppy, it's a really nice puppy, come get it. Um, we found an owner in like four hours because people like, that's what people do. They look through stories. How long should the story be? Uh, well, the story will limit you. So the story, the story can be just a picture and then it's not a length, or if it's a video, it only has a certain amount of time. I think it's like, what, 10 seconds or something? I don't think it's 30. I don't think it's more than 15. Yeah, it's super short. Yeah, so if, if you're on your phone, we're so the next slide actually, we're, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but let's just do this because that's what the next slide is. We're all going to do a story right now. Everybody get out your phone. Okay. So, in case you've never done a, a story before, you're going to open your app. And the first thing you're going to see on the left side is your little profile picture that says create story. Whoa. On the Facebook app or Instagram app, right? I'm just using Facebook in this example, but create story. And then you can either stand up, everybody stand up, take a picture, take a video. We're gonna take the next three minutes to put a story up. Josh, I wanna add something in real quick. Yeah, if you go. link your Instagram to your Facebook, post your story on Instagram and automatically post on your Facebook, save yeah. you time, just heads up. Yeah, so if you have Instagram and Facebook, Instagram will post to Facebook, Facebook won't post to Instagram. So do it on Instagram and then you kind of cover both fields. Okay, everybody ready to be in my story? Hey, we are in class right now talking about online lead generation and everybody's posting stories. We're practicing, yes. That's it, that's my story. We are in class right now talking about online lead generation and everybody's posting stories. We're practicing, yes. You can stand up, you can talk, you can do a video. Like everybody's way too quiet to get a really good story right now. Oh, well, that's another thing. Do you have any shared directly from Slack to Facebook? None that I know of. Uh-huh. 
Okay, you got one minute to make the best Facebook story you've ever made in your entire life, right? It's gonna happen right now. Just kidding. So, okay, before I go over this a little bit more, that wasn't one minute, but oh well. Um, what's the most important thing you can do with social media? Be <laughs> You've been in too many of my classes. Eh? And this is like my rule of thumb for everything. If you're gonna do anything, just at least do it consistently. Like that's the most important thing. The content, like you can improve on that, but get better at just posting something on your story. I think the one thing we get hung up with, especially with stories is we don't think our life is interesting. Your life is way more interesting than you think it is. Um, like for example, like my landscaping, right? Like. For your average Joe, or for some people, that might be like, oh, it's just like another person, like another landscaping picture. But I heard at least three comments were like, oh, that's cool. That's beautiful. You know, like people like to see what's going on in your life, especially when they don't have to interact you, with you to do it. <laughs> um, okay, but let's talk about stories, reels, and posts. So with posts, usually you want to try to get two to three. And this is where that 80-20 rule applies, especially. Um, two to three a week at minimum. I'm talking about minimums here, right? With stories, it should be daily. With reels, what do you think? How often should you put a reel up? Weekly? <laughs> Everyone has a different opinion. And so you do it two days a week. So my answer to this would be whatever you'll do, right? I think reels are a little bit harder because they're a little bit more time intensive and actually take more thought, kind of like a post. So I think two is fine, it's great. I think daily is starting to push it unless you wanna be an influencer. Like if that's how you wanna get your business is through social media influencing, then you gotta be daily on pretty much all of these, right? But if you're just trying to kind of get by, I'd say once a week on the reels, I'd say weekly is fine. Twice is great, but post two to three stories daily. All right, that seems fair. Any questions on this? Hopefully this isn't like boring everybody out of their minds. Just a reminder. Okay. So then when it comes to posts, <laughs> I'm totally throwing my wife under the bus on this, but can we just establish a three line limit? Okay. The three line limit is, if you are going over three lines, once your post is completed, it is too long. Meaning you have to hit enter somewhere. You gotta space out your wording or you're gonna lose interest in, from the readers. Does that make sense? So let me give you, like, let's just go back to my Facebook. Oh, I left it, whoops. So in my posts, three line limit. Like you're just, you're just trying to make sure that you capture people's attention with short sentences, that you're not just blabbing on, right? They can read your sentence pretty dang quickly and know what's, what's going on without having to read a novel. That seem fair? Any questions about that? Three line limit? Kind of like a blog. I'm just saying to split them. You can write as long of a post as you want. I'm just saying when you write a long post, split it up so it's easier to read. Does that make sense? Because this is way too hard to read. If I'm looking at that, I'm like, oh, I'm already not interested. Like, so you're not talking about the length of content. I'm not talking about the length of content. The I'm talking about the formatting itself. Exactly. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I try to keep it. Like I try to have no more than like two or three, even with three lines. Like sometimes there are like four will sneak in, you know, cause there's certain things you can't control. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to break up a thought, but like a lot of this, like, let's just read through this. Josh and I fell asleep tonight. Oh, let's go back. Josh and I fell, fell asleep tonight watching the TV series, The Chosen. Totally recommended by the way. Lila walked in our room and saw we were asleep and turned off our lights and turned off the TV. Cute enter right that's the end of that thought next thought then she went back to her room to play with rosie this is an hour after we put them back to bed enter this is a new thought 
I heard Lila come in, but I didn't move because I wondered what she would do. So after, anyway, does that make sense? Like, I, I, if I am scrolling through Facebook and I see that thick of a paragraph, I'm just going to keep scrolling through unless I really, really like that person. Is that your wife's post? That's my wife's post, yeah. So I'm literally throwing her under the bus, but she's amazing. Anyway, any questions on this? That seemed like a good rule. Okay, a limited amount of emojis. I mean, that's self-explanatory. Use emojis. How many? It's too many. There's not, there's not like a rule. Like too many is, I don't know. Well, there is a rule of too many, absolutely. But like, I wouldn't be able to say like, if you have 200 words, you should only have five emojis. I think that's perfect. Like sometimes I have one emoji. Sometimes I have no emojis. I think it's completely dependent on the feeling of your posts. Does that make sense? Like I, I, I like to think of emojis as kind of like a break for a second, like to add a little bit of a break in either the seriousness of the post or in like the, or to add like a little bit of funniness to it. Does that make sense? So, I mean, it's, there's not really a right answer there in my mind. Yes, go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should we look through Dan's Facebook page and see if he has ever had an emoji in his entire life? <laughs> yeah, and that's fine, right? Like I, I just said, like I sometimes I don't use emojis. I just think emojis overdone is worst case scenario. It's better to have less emojis than overdo them. Okay, so let's talk about groups really quick. Still on the social media thing. Um, become the go-to in your community group. How many of you have a community group? Raise your hand. That could be like a religious community group. That could be like, I was in Scenic Mountain. That's what this, oh, geez. That's what this is from. Scenic Mountain was the community that I lived in. So raise your hand again. Raise your hand if you're familiar with your community group. So wait, raise them high. Keep them up, keep them up. It looks like we've got like eight. I promise you, probably 80% of you have a community group that you don't know about that exists, that you should be a part of, right? And as your community group, do things in it. Be present and interested, not a salesman. Um, oh, geez. I keep meaning to click on these like they'd come up, but they don't. So like, here's a couple examples of, I loved being in this community group. Um, but also, I feel like I, I've probably had two closings from this community group, and I lived in this community for only a year in, in that time. So right here, my daughter was going to play soccer. So what did I do? I go, went on the community page, and I was like, is anybody else playing soccer? You know, I think I'll coach. And then when I coached, I got to meet all the parents, and three of them, started talking to me about real estate. What do you do for work? Oh yeah, you do real estate, great. Well, what do you think about the market right now, right? Like it's just getting involved in your community through the groups, right? I would, every time we had an HOA meeting, I would always post on the community page about the HOA meeting. Hey guys, don't remember, don't forget if you, I mean, like what do, what do people do on community group pages? They complain, exactly, right? So my response to that is, um, hey, if you wanna make, see some changes in the community, this is how you do it. It starts this time at this. Let's, let's make this the community we want it to be kind of thing. Does that make sense? Um, and then also our team does a dumpster every year for whatever community our agents live in. So we bring a dumpster to the neighborhood and we just say, hey, just so you know, our team's just throwing a dumpster. We're going to put it in this parking lot. I talked to the HOA. They said we can put it in their clubhouse parking lot. Um, but just please come use it. Hope you guys are having a great holiday season. Or we usually do it like right after New Year's, right? But like, these are the things. And every time I mention in some minor capacity, or I don't mention actually, of my involved shin, it's not a word, that I'm involved in real estate, right? And then people start asking you questions. Once they realize that you're involved in the community and that you're the guy that knows things, that knows where to go for things, then you're the guy to ask for real estate questions. I probably had... 30 real estate conversations in this community, which led to two closings. 
Okay, any questions on that? Okay. Also, clean up your profile page. Uh, your profile page should have, ideally, a lot of this filled out, right? Have a good quality picture of yourself. It doesn't have to be like a professional picture, go. Hmm, I don't know if I agree with that. Thoughts, go. Prove her wrong. I agree. That's fair. You okay. Them. Okay. That's true. And I think it's also the are you, all of your pages just with friends or are they public? Public. 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 Okay. All right. There you go. So you can make your phone number only show up to family and friends. Mm, I would totally recommend that. I think that's that's great. Yes, go. You have to choose what what stuff shows up on your page in your settings. <laughs> so Marcy, go on your laptop when you're messing with this, not on your phone. And then look in your settings and what's allowed to show on your public profile. Yes, go. Hey, Josh, what do you kind of start best practices? You know, you're in various community groups and in your own Facebook uh -huh. groups. And you're posting, you're contributing. There's 3,000 members. There's 5,000 members. Uh -huh. Obviously, they're not all your friends. So if there's 3,000 members, then they're not your community page. Or like your specific neighborhood page is kind of what I'm referring to. Does that make sense? Okay, so like a city, a city page. Okay, a city page. Okay, that's a different. That's a that's a different vibe for me. But keep going. Okay, but when you interact with people um, and they notice you and they you know direct message you or they like your post, uh -huh. are you friending them? Yeah, I I think it's good to friend everybody. Like get them like friending in me is to me is kind of like. I mean, that's not true. Not everybody. Like, if I don't know them, if, if someone requests my friend request and I've never met them before, then I won't accept it. Or I have no idea where this is coming from because I'm just assuming it's like some spammer from who knows where, right? But like, I'm not afraid to add people as my friend because I view this as my way to get my face in front of people, pretty much. Does that make sense? It's like adding them to an email campaign. If they're in your community group, uh -huh. like uh huh. You know, it's as if they should be part of your database. Yeah, it's pretty much adding them to your database to add them as a friend, in a sense, right? It's not really like don't mix those two up, but it's kind of that concept, right? It is a database, but you don't actually have contact info. You just have the ability to DM them, right? Okay. Uh, where where were we? Oh, clean up your profile page. Yep. Make sure your make sure your Facebook. I mean, everybody, open your Facebook right now. Do you have a good Facebook picture on there? Well, there you go, there's a no, right? Like, look professional, or not even professional, that's the wrong word. Look like somebody people would want to talk to. Approachable, Approachable. that's the right word, right? Like, I've, I've gone back and forth between this picture, actually, and in fact, you guys tell me. This one and, not that one. That one's pretty good, though, not that one. Oh my gosh, I'm like a baby in some of these. No, it's gone. That's hilarious. I don't know where it went, but there's another one that I like too. Anyway, just clean this up. Also have a really good cover photo. Usually, so usually the best practice is on your Facebook profile picture, you have a really good headshot of yourself and then your cover photo is an interest, right? Like on, when you're on social media, you kind of keep to three topics. That's like you, like for me, it's disc golf, my kids, and real estate, like those are the three things that like pretty much summarize my life, right? Um, I mean, if we scroll through here, like there's real estate, there's kids, oh, and maybe Jesus. But let's see here. There's gotta be a disc golf post in here somewhere. Just so you don't think I'm a liar. There it is. Disc golf, Jesus. Anyway, so those three things, right? Like also up here, this is where I talk about them in my intro. Family, friends, faith, real estate wealth advisor, disc golf addict. 
That's my entire bio, right? Keep it simple, but just clean this up so people can understand you quickly and know who you are and get that impression of you right off the back. Yes, go. Hey, I have just a little different opinion. Um, go. I think for your personal Facebook, especially with um, just having everybody you know, that requests is your friend, mm -hmm. I have like two, 300 requests and a lot of them from people from overseas or whatever. Uh -huh. but I think it's a safety thing for you and your family. I don't think every Joe Blow needs to know that you have young kids. That you go to this park every Thursday. I don't think that's great for your family or for your business. And that's why I don't add any friend that I haven't like met in person. Does that make sense? So I'll add anybody and their dog that I've met in person and that I've gotten a good vibe from. Does that make sense? But if like some random guy invites me to like it happens all the time, right? Like probably like once a week, some guy from overseas is like, hey, let's be friends. I'm like, no way, you know. So I totally agree with you. you can make your post public to go to the public. Yeah. And then the other one, that way anybody can see it. Yeah. I think that's a safety issue that for me and for our, for our friends is I think it's important you keep your friends as private. Mm. Um, so I have all my stuff in public, but I don't want people to know who my friends are because people do, like there's guests, people go into families. And I know, I just did, I, I think the girls have left there and like, I'm sorry, you know, putting people down like, Yeah, for me. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I feel like I feel like privacy is kind of like a political thing. Does that make sense? In the sense of like, like, I don't think there's a right answer here. I think it's whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you want to do, do that thing so that you feel comfortable. But I don't think there is a right answer here. I think it's like whatever you want to do. Does that seem fair? Yes, go. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the side that I lean towards. Because like even with my friends list, like people are gonna spam my friends. Like if people are gonna spam my friends, they're gonna spam my friends. Like it's very unlikely that I will be the cause of that because my profile is public. Like they're gonna find a way to spam people no matter what. And if Anyway, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But anyway, but again, like that's my answer, but like that's not the right answer, right? Like do whatever you feel comfortable with. But I do think like it's important to have a lot of your stuff be public because you're a public figure at this point, pretty much. Um, but I, I want to move on from this because this is not what I meant to take time on. Um, so economists of choice. You guys, do you guys understand what economists of choice means? That means when you post on Facebook, people should look at you as the person who knows what's going on with the economy, right? Like, let's share some economy posts here. <laughs> uh, oh, we never figured out how to search on this. Oh, well, I won't take the time to do that. But pretty much like the, we have the 80-20 rule, right? So like you're posting 80% of the time about your family, but then the other 20%, like I would probably make at least half of those be about the economy. What is going on right now in the market? This is what's going on. This is where I think it's going to go. And this is kind of what I think that means kind of thing. Does that make sense? Go. I don't know if I need to be part of the economy. I don't know if I need to be part of the economy. Briefly. I mean, so you do a business page so you can run ads. Unless you're going to commit to a business page and be a Becca Summers and like post every day. Like, do a business page for ads. That's that's my opinion. Anybody have any other opinions? I mean, that's not that doesn't mean it's right. No one's gonna challenge me. All right, cool. That means I'm right. <laughs> okay, so uh, take time to comment. So, you have you guys heard of the five five five? Of course you haven't. That's why you're in this class, right? I wonder what's on the back of here. All right, let me erase this really quick. Peter, what's the 555? Five, five? Um, I don't know where I learned it, but I love it. Every time I do it, I get a, a transaction or two. So it's five posts in a week, five comments per day, 
and 5 p.m. per day. So per day, yeah. per day, per week. And for the purpose of this, I would kind of mix posts with stories. I think that's fair. And I would probably make this maybe even 10 if you're going to mix in stories, but I feel like five posts is, is yeah, well, that would be a minimum with stories. Yeah, I agree. Um, so five comments a day. Like, how often do you guys go on Facebook and comment? Like, for the purpose of commenting on the people on your page. And you have to be strategic. Don't just comment on the people that are coming through your page. Yeah, go find them. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a sec. Sorry, I've got comments. Go. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Do the ABCs, guys. So start with A's, go B's. Every day, pick a name. I mean, pick a pick a letter. Find all your friends that start with the letter A. Go comment on their stuff. Then bees go comment on their stuff. Like take 15 minutes every single day to do this. Yes. You can do a custom list for your friends. And I do mine by first letters because I don't want to comment on husbands and wives the same day. And you could name your list. Yeah. So mine would say, A, I did all my A first names on 722. Yeah. There's 13 of them, and it took me 10 minutes. Yeah, there you go. And so I can look and strategically, I can go through and comment on everyone in a month. Yep, I love it. So DMs, let's talk about DMs really quick. What's the easiest way to DM people? Stories, right? Don't go find their profile and DM them directly, but look through your stories every day and DM the story. That gives you an excuse, right? Like, oh, that's so fun. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, your kid's so cute. You know, like, I don't really care about your kids, but I'm commenting because we're friends. Just kidding. I know that's what you all do to me, but anyway, that makes sense. So stories, when we're talking about DMing people, this is my recommendation is to just actually comment on stories. Okay, we got a cruise because we are going so slow. Okay, make an offer for immediate response. Every time you're posting something, um, when when you're doing things online, the purpose is to get something out of it and you're offering something in return. Does that make sense? Make sure you're always offering. So here's a list of examples. Best buy list. So like if you want sweet deals, I'll get you on a list. Instant notification of homes for sale. Find out what your home is worth. See more about a property. Automated guidance, foreclosures, free reports on the market. You know, anyway, go. Yes. I was going to say, so um, make up for me your response. Something that I do at the very beginning of the year with my DMs is I will message people very directly about real estate. And I'll say, hey, I'm filling up my calendar with consultations for people who are looking to make a move this year. Mm -hmm. Who do you know who might be interested in buying, building, or investing or something like that? Yep. Um, I'd love to, you know, if you think of those folks, don't hesitate to reach out. Yep. And I inevitably will get a transaction out of that. Yep. And I'm going to select who I send that DM to, but... Yep. Yep. I love it. Mofers. Remember your mofers. Okay? Feel good? Okay. Really quick. We are... I want to show you what I would consider is one of the best ideas we've ever had. Which is um, direct targeting through Facebook ads. Okay, so all of you have an SOI. In fact, raise your hand if you don't have an SOI. Because that's a problem. We should talk about that. You're in the wrong class. Go to the SOI class. Just kidding. Okay, so there's a difference between Facebook. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So there's a difference between Facebook and Facebook business, right? Do you guys know that? Facebook regular page, you can run ads from Facebook regular page. 
So if I go to home and I go to a business page and I go to, uh, where is it? Oh, ad center, right? That's the wrong place, right? We wanna go to ad manager in your business page, okay? So if you go to business.facebook.com, that's where you can manage your business on a much higher level than just through Facebook itself. Does that make sense? Um, so when you're in here, let's go to an ad account. We're gonna go to Peter Morkel Real Estate Group. Why is this different? Oh, that's why. Wait. I mean, apparently I'm like new at this, but this is like a totally different. They just changed this? I don't even know where to go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's so embarrassing. I can't believe that. Okay, so uh, I'm in campaigns. So I wanna, there's two things to this. First of all, you don't have to remember any of this, okay? Because at the end of this, we're gonna show you the group that we're gonna post a walkthrough video of how to do this. Does that make sense? So don't worry about the how-to right now. Just, just think about what I'm showing you and how that applies to your business. Does that seem fair? Okay. So what we're doing is we are running ads directly to our SOI, straight to our SOI. We pull email lists from wherever we can get them, right? Like how many of you have a pretty extensive email list of the people you know? Right. Okay. I mean, like, I think we underestimate the amount of resources we can get email lists from, right? Like sports events. How many of you are on a sport, have a kid on a sports team where um, they send out a bulk email and forget to not CC everybody in the same email, right? Like scour your Gmail. You've got a ton of things like that, right? Maybe church events or maybe whatever it might be, right? Like you have the, uh, the email to way more people you know than you think you do. Anyway, so we collect all those emails and we put them into here. That's the wrong one. Let me find this one. And we run ads directly to them. So this is what they see. And we change this image once a month or so. Pretty much what it says is curious about buying, selling, or building a home, I've got your back. Here's my name, here's my number. I'm just a click away. Again, there's my number, call or text. And the only place this ad is going is the people that I know. Isn't that great? So probably four times a day, people in my SOI, we spend a dollar a day on this, are seeing my face when they're scrolling through social media. I get probably, I mean, I've had seven people like talk to me about this specifically. Like I see you everywhere, man. Like when I'm on Instagram, like I feel like four times a week, I'm seeing your face pop up in front of me when I'm just scrolling through stories or whatever it is, right? Like, like this, this works in getting yourself in front of people and spending good quality money that's actually putting you in front of your people. Does that make sense? So you should do this. So we're going to show you how. You need to make sure that when you, when you create this, um, you have a different image for each type of ad because ad placements are kind of tricky. This is what the story would look like. But when it comes to your regular ads, you've got your regular feed ads where we saw the wonderful lingerie ad. Oh, here's a better one. So cargurus.com, right? And then there's always ads up here. So this is one type of ad. This is one type of ad. And then there's ads in your story. Does that make sense? And I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you're on Facebook, you see a crap load of ads, right? It's like every three posts. So let's count, right? There's one. So one, there's Brady. Hey, Brady. Two, three, there's Mason. Four, five. Oh my gosh, we're in five posts. There's an ad. Buffalo Wild Wings, right? One, there's Bart. Two, three. I love Ryobi tools. Four. Five, did they change and suddenly do <laughs> sports bras, huh? I know. I feel a little bit embarrassed about this. I feel a little bit embarrassed about this. I don't know what's going on. It's my wife, guys. It's my wife, guys. If you do searches for sports bras, they will show up on your feed. 
That's true, actually. And that's probably what's going on here. Anyway, here's another one. This is a game, okay? It's not some weird... <laughs> Stop judging me. Anyway, that makes sense? Like, your clients are seeing ads all the time, and then when it's suddenly your face instead of some random Ryobi ad, right? Then they're like, oh, look, it's Dave. It's John. Whatever. Anyway, this is great, and it works... The nice thing about Facebook is that it will go to both Facebook and their Instagram and just be there all the time. We spend a dollar a day, one dollar every day. Yep, we target both. So it's just always on both, whichever one they use more. Nope, one ad targets both. So we are gonna go here. At the very end, I'm gonna have a QR code up. It's gonna be a group. We're creating a new mastermind group for this class where you're gonna be able to, I'll talk more about it at the end. And, uh, and then that's where you can get the video. But let's talk about ahas really quick. We've got, oh my gosh. And then I'll be super fast for the last points. Okay, ahas, go. Social media ahas, we're done with social media. Go. Nothing, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. I have no idea. Oh, how is he getting their email addresses? No, no, no. He's always got something to comment on, so it's caption. When you go to uh -huh. the fireworks show, there's thousands of people there. Yeah. How is he leveraging the information he's getting from those 5,000 people? I mean, I would assume through ads or, like, there's a billion ways you can leverage that. Email campaigns. He's sending them things for having, he's doing, but he's now captured their information. Yeah. Yeah, so you should always have, like, if you ever throw an event, like that's the reason why you throw an event is for information capture, right? Like that's the whole purpose of an event is to get as much information as your clientele. And what you're doing for them is you give them a free event, but what they're doing is they're giving you their social security number, their credit card, and just kidding. But you know, address, phone number, email, every single time, every event. Yes, Brady. I would argue, I would say that Jimmy Rex has a few plans for Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I would agree. Okay. Any other ahas? Or any ahas at all? No one had a single aha. What a waste of time. Just kidding. Go. Cool. <laughs> yes. I love it. Give me more ahas, guys. Mason. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Facebook will stop showing you people if you're not interacting with them, just so you know. So you've got to be in <laughs> Okay, that's true. <laughs> Unless I find someone you're really annoyed by, then it always puts them in front of you. Just kidding. Anyway, any other ahas we want to bring up? What was that? Yes, that's probably true. Go. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, great way. Okay, let's keep going. We're almost there. We've got four more minutes of content. Okay, so the last two things I'm going to talk about are your website and Googling yourself, okay? Um, when I got the subject of online lead generation, I was like, there's so much here. So I wanted to focus on social media, but I also want to tie it back to this because everything goes back to your website and therefore back to your CRM. Is your website ran through your CRM? Why? Well, I know why, actually. So <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> That's webs. The website's rough on uh, with with commands sometimes, but the what? Oh, they have lead capture on them. Well, there you go. 
Yeah, I think you can even link some Wix sites. You should talk to Jordan about that. Jordan is your local regional tech trainer. He'll, he'll be able to help you. <laughs> Look at that setup. <laughs> um, okay, so everything goes back to your website. Guys, your CRM should be kind of like the place where you put things. Blog posts, it's where you send people for everything. If you're putting a link on Instagram, if you're putting a link on anything, that's where you send people. The only exception I would make is if your CRM doesn't have a competent event builder, like then just send them to your event instead, right? But like in my mind, like this is... People go back to your website because what do they do after they find the vendor list? That they need to get a hold of the person, they're on your website and they see homes and they're like, oh, you, that's a beautiful home, look at that. Then they're looking at homes and then they're thinking about you and they're on your website and you're tracking that information. Everything goes back to your website. That seem fair? Okay. Uh, CRMs that you love, I don't really care. So we're not gonna talk about CRMs that you love, but there's lots of CRMs. And a lot of them are really good. Um, are your smart plans smart? So Brady talked about this for a second, but smart plans, they start with an eight by eight. I mean, this is in my mind, one of the best practices that comes from this book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Um, starts with an eight by eight. Well, there's sometimes other things that it start, actually starts with, but an eight by eight is eight touches in eight weeks to try to get a hold of them, right? Um, and then a 12 direct is if they don't respond, a 36 touch is if they do respond. Does that make sense? A 12 direct just means like, then you're sending them something because you have their contact information. So you're just shooting for the stars and trying to get in front of them for 12 months. And then a 36 touch is for 12 months, you're reaching out to them 36 times total within those 12 months, whether it be through events, whatever, whatever it might be. But once you get an online lead, they should be automated into these types of systems so that you're not, your online leads aren't just not going anywhere. Does that make sense? That seem fair? We have tons of classes about all of these topics. So if you want to know a good 12 direct, if you want to know a good 36 touch, I think we have like probably eight on our YouTube page about the 36 touch. Cameron's probably taught half of them. And I've probably taught the other half. <laughs> so anyway, are you Googleable? That's a real word. Just kidding. I don't know if it is, but um, if you Google your name on Google right now, right? Jason Busselberg, realtor, do you come up? And do you come up with something like this with a little bit of a review and easy access to your web page, a phone number, right? Jason's on our team. So when, when, if we were to Google Jason, it would probably come up with the Peter Merkel Real Estate Group. <laughs> That's, those are the best reviews, right, though? Because then people read through them and they're like, oh, cooking? Oh, okay, well, he's probably great. Anyway, so are you Googleable? There is, if you Google the words, Google my business, okay? Google my business. That's where you build this out. That's where you can manage the phone number, the website, everything that's linked to your Google account. Make sure that you're google Apple, okay? If you wanna be successful and on my maids. Okay. We were way longer on some of those other topics than I was anticipating, but hey, look at that, we did it. It's 12 o'clock. Okay, last ahas, and then we're gonna have you come up and talk to us about the group page. Okay, ahas, go. From this whole class, what did you learn? Nothing. Go. Yeah. Should be a conversation. Yep. Go. Well, speaking of the 36 touch, if you're engaging with your SOI, uh -huh. purposely commenting is going to get you more. Uh, it's a touch. Liking their post is not a touch. Yeah. I don't remember who liked my post, but I remember commenting. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. What else? Yes. Well, I, I'm not too savvy with uh, social media, so this is helping me know what I need to know. Huh. Reach yeah, know what you need to know. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Five billion people. That's a lot. Go. Yeah. Cold DMs are weird, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, every once in a while from like a vendor, I'll get a private DM. I'll be like, what the heck? Like, you weirdo. You know, <laughs> like, hey, dude, how's business? I'm like, I don't even know you. You know, like, yeah, exactly. Comment on stories. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, awesome. Any others? Yes. 0.5 Zoom. Oh my gosh. I've used 0.5 Zoom since that class probably like 20 times. And that was like three weeks ago. I should tell that class. What else? Okay. Thanks for coming. Come on up. Tell us about this page where we'll put secret stuff on. Yeah, it'll have all of the all of the shift. So uh, right now, there's been a lot of conversation about shift within the brokerage as well as agents not in the brokerage. And we wanted to actually create a community of it uh, here in Utah County, Salt Lake County as well, but uh, mainly for here in Utah County. So uh, go ahead and join. Uh, this is for the shift Facebook groups. So what we're going to have, we're going to have uh, video clips where you can then get access to the full video. So if you need to go back and be like, okay, what was that really good point that I learned about? go here we'll be getting all the videos uploaded you can go there and get access to that information but also it's an opportunity to interact with each other and just put like you know times where you've actually put into practice what you've learned from shift and then what that has done for you uh, this is a really great opportunity it goes beyond uh, just the keller williams page you know that page is meant for us as a brokerage to discuss you know transaction specific things to get to know each other better and um, you know talk about our different events this page is going to really be like a page about like tactics and community helping build each other up, you know, because we're entering tough seas in the market. And so this is a great place to help build each other up and, and share our wins and get the information that we need. So go to the link, join it. And if you know other agents they think will benefit from it, be sure to include them in it and invite them as well.